Um, so distinguished engineers, uh, as you can see in, in the office, the wireless CTO, or wireless CTO is Matt McPherson. Uh, so I, I'm left in between you and your lunch, so I'll just take a few minutes, but we thought you know, it could be interesting for you to know about us and, and what we do. Um, so in this office of the uh, wireless CTO, we work you know, with the engineering team, we work with the uh, product management team, uh, but also what you may not know is that we also work with the R&D departments of, uh, of the last uh, the large players out there. And, you know, that's what we call the device ecosystem partners. And that's, you know, your key clients and device ecosystem vendors, you know, the chipset vendors, the solution vendors. Um, and what we do is that we look at this horizon, you know, five to eight years. We try to understand what the problems will be in five to eight years. Um, and we try to find solutions for, for those problems. So somebody was joking about Wi-Fi 8. Um, so that's what we're talking about. You know, I've been talking about that all week. I don't have the access point yet, uh, <laughs> but I have, you know, about 600 pages of notes. So I'm sure if I concatenate this, this well enough, we'll have an access point out of it. Very good. Um, so what we do is that we work in three different access um, standards, of course. Uh, that is to say, we, we design you know, new solutions, um, you know, either by ourselves or again with these device ecosystem partners, and we bring them to these standard bodies. Uh, so of course we are fairly active there. Um, we have um, leadership position in IEEE in the 802.11 BH, PI, COEX, JTC, uh, the working group itself in the Wi-Fi Alliance, WBA, and you know outside of uh, purely 802.11, we also look at uh, you know BLE or wideband. We are uh, active in FIRA, which is the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance equivalent for for uh, wideband. Um, so we, we had um, we, we contribute there. I counted before uh, this uh, meeting, and we had about two hundred contributions just this year into eight to eleven. Um, so that's you know in the standard. But as you know, in eight to eleven, there's a standard that describes uh, the protocols, what the packets should be looking like, what the exchanges should be looking like. Um, but it don't tell you when it's clever to use this frame and when it's dumb to use that frame. So we we work also with these basic system partners to uh, try to find those you know, misunderstanding that can happen between the access point and the client side engineering teams, and we try to fill these gaps. Um, I was counting against uh, just uh, this year, we found about 147 gaps in the standard Wi-Fi, you know, even be uh, just for the implementation of these different standards that we could again, um, you know, fill because we work with these device ecosystem partners. So, you know, that's the standard part. Uh, we also do what we call the standards plus uh, uh, part, which is where uh, we work uh, with these device ecosystem partners to uh, go beyond what is the standard today to try to you know, think of problems which may be a little bit specific, a little bit vertical specific, um, and we try to develop solutions together for these problems. Uh, sometimes you know, we do proof of concept, sometimes we uh, implement those uh, in, the, in our products, um, and then we proof case, you know, the solution, and we bring that back to the next generation of the standards. Um, so many of us, you know, you, you know as well, so you, you know some of these names, for example, Fastlane, you know, you've heard about that. Um, that's something we did a few years back. That became uh, what we call in the Wi-Fi Alliance, the OCE QoS Management R2 program. You also heard about uh, this Fastlane Plus, uh, a program that we did for 11AX case. Well, that was inserted then into 11BE, um, as uh, the SCS QC you know, uh, QS uh, uh, characteristic uh, feature, it's now also in Wi-Fi 7. You know, the same goes you know for open rooming. You know that we we brought that we would build that in house. We gave it away to the WBA, and then we put in 811 in the Wi-Fi Alliance Pass One program all the bricks you know needed to make that work. You know for the entire industry. So you know we we do that a lot, um, and that allows us you know to proof uh, technology before we bring it uh, into the standards. And then, of course, you know, in some cases, uh, as you see at the bottom, sometimes, you know, there is no real need for uh, industry-wide standards. That's uh, um, what we call the uh, device ecosystem partner specific standards, where uh, the challenges are specific to a vertical or to a type of device, uh, so much so that we want to find solutions that work for that type of device, but that do not necessarily require um, a full-blown, you know, integration into the standard. For example, you know, you have your uh, barcode scanner. Uh, that thing can go to sleep and then wake up and then it may lose its connection quite often because it sleeps for a while. Uh, so there may need to be a solution where we work with a, a special messaging to these devices so that they maintain the connection, you know, for hours or for days, you know, that, that kind of things. So what we do is that we design all these things, we design, we bring into standards, we do the proof of concepts, we proof case the solution, um, and then we bring the solution back to the, uh, our, the PM team. And that's where, you know, they, they talk with you. Um, to determine which of these uh, possibilities have the most um, uh, benefits for the industry and for our customers. And then that's how we integrate these uh, these features into our product. All right, that's what we do roughly. 
Um, you know, I don't have time to to go to all these uh, the details of what we do, but we thought it could be interesting you know, to give you you know two quick examples of where what we're working on uh, now, so that you have a, a glance of where we're going. Um, one of them is what you see here, which is a uh, roaming so again, roaming. Yeah, roaming. You know, sadly, has not been entirely solved um, yet. Uh, you know, there are plenty of cases where. Uh, roaming within a domain, you know, Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi doesn't work well, or between domains, which is a bit newer, uh, between LTE and Wi-Fi doesn't work well. You know, you move from LTE to Wi-Fi, your device, you know, turns to the Wi-Fi uh, path, and then as you move away, uh, because you're, you're mobile, uh, you don't get the right connection to the AP, and then you drop the connection to the Wi-Fi before you could establish fully the data path. And that doesn't give you, you know, a good quality of experience. And also for, you know, service providers on the LTE who would like to switch the data path to Wi-Fi in high-density environments like inside buildings, it doesn't give them this carrier uh, quality. So we're working with a, a bunch of uh, device ecosystem partners you know, and device uh, vendors um, to try to work on exchanges uh, to be able to provide information to each other and guide this uh, roaming experience. So you heard of FTM. Uh, FTM is one uh, uh, technology. Uh, we have a uh, um, uh, possibility now to have uh, uh, location information to and from that device. So what we do is that we, we define what we call this vector-based roaming where uh, we can establish a displacement vector for these devices, which is you know the position and then the derivative of that, the uh, uh, movements, and then the derivative of that, which is the acceleration. So we get that data and we understand how the device is moving uh, compared to the position of the access points. And then that allows us to you know provide recommendations to this device. So for example, you see the car at the bottom, um, that thing is moving fast past the building. So it may get in range of the building access points, uh, but the AP is going to tell that device, you know, it's, there is no point for you to join this Wi-Fi because you're you're passing too fast to be able to worth uh, to be worth uh, using it. Uh, the lady you see on the on the left side, you know, she's moving toward a building for now. She's on the LTE. Uh, there will be a point where we'll be able to say you're getting to the point where you could be using the Wi-Fi in the building. She'll, you know, the AP will help her connect. That is to say, find the right time in the in the packet exchange where she can switch a data path. Uh, so that there is zero interruption in in her uh, communication, and then as she moves away from the building, she can also get from the AP a time uh, where it's it's the best to switch back to the LTE. And of course, if you are inside the building, we can detect if you're moving or not moving. So this doesn't seem about, uh, uh, like much, but this is something we want to solve, where we want to get rid of this uh, you know five to eight second glitch that you have when you move between the LTE and the and the Wi-Fi. Next slide, please. Um, so that's a small example, but you know everybody today is talking about new exciting stuff like uh, LLM. So of course, you know, we're looking five years in the future. We know that in five years, everybody will have LLMs everywhere, not, you know, really probably LLMs, but probably SLMs, you know, small language models that will be hyper-trained for some devices. So we'll know you have that in your network infrastructures. We know you'll have that also on your our client device. Um, so what we're experimenting uh, uh, right now with these guys is to see how we can use uh, these LLMs to you know build the next generation of what you're you're working on with uh, with Tony and, and Mince, which is troubleshooting, where we want to be able to have these LLMs talk to each other dynamically and automatically in the background of the network, so that you know instead of pulling all the KPIs from those devices um, uh, to get all the information you need, uh, we'll be able to detect first you know with AI ML um, at one point there is a deri uh, deviation from normal behavior. And when that point happens, you, the LLM in the infrastructure or the, or the client will be able to query the other side and say, can you give me the KPIs you know, that are needed to troubleshoot this symptom? And this device will be able to say, okay, you need this, 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 and that, and we'll be returning the KPIs you need to exactly see what the problem is uh, without having to filter and, and get all the packets. So you know, that's, um, that's a couple of examples. Of course, you know, I, I should say, None of that is committed, right? We're looking into experiments. There are a few dozens of programs we have running right now. Um, you know, some of them will conclude successfully that they don't go anywhere. Um, and several of them will, you know, become uh, slowly a part of the of the protocol. Um, and you know, some others will, will get into our products into this uh, five or or, or ten year uh, program. And of course, you know, there are plenty of other things like. You know, we're talking location. Um, FTM is here. There's a new generation called 11AZ and another one called 11BK. Um, we're starting to see fusion of uh, location information between um, our wide band, BLE, um, and and uh, and Wi-Fi. So we are working on all these axes to try to understand how you know your Wi-Fi experience uh, will be looking like in in five years. So this is you know super exciting, and of course you know you know where to find me. So if you want to know more or exchange about ideas about where where we could be going. Uh, please feel free to reach out. But I'm going to stop there so that I'm not interrupting your lunch. 
uh, the vector stuff, was that standard or standard plus? I, I missed. Standard plus. Standard plus, yes, for now. Yeah. Does it account? Well, I guess it probably doesn't. Well, let's say we're leaving the office and going to the car in the parking lot and we're on our team's call or WebEx call. Excuse me. Yep. Is it going to account for that weird trend? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Even if you spin around the building, we'll be able to detect that trajectory and understand that in fact you're sticking to the access point domain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it accounts for that too. Yeah. Yeah. So solve that one. <laughs> Working on it. 